Oh, that's probably a, a difficult one to sum up. Could you see that fight back coming uh, 50 minutes into the game? Yeah. Um, I, I, I said on Sky earlier that I, I think, or maybe BBC, um, I think we all look too much at the scoreboard sometimes instead of just looking at the battle. And there's a reason it's an 80-minute game. Uh, equally, last week we, you know, we were leading at halftime, and and that was good. But you know, it's it's only part of the story. I thought Lee attacked, you know, extremely well. Some of their edge combinations were, were sharp, and they they got us. Um, but overall, I, I didn't think there was a lot of plays in the game where um, they. They uh, they troubled us too much, uh, aside from those really good plays, and they they got the reward for it in that in that first half. Uh, we spoke at half time about being a bit more direct and and tackling with a little bit more intent, and I thought we did that in the second half. And then the the physical battle uh, went went our way, clearly went our way uh, in the second half, and and we were hard to stop from that point. Obviously, the the attacking play when you got on top was. was um was exceptional, but the, the tackle that um, prevented them scoring, I think it was Hanley, um, before, at 16 0 before you got on the score, well, that was an important moment, wasn't it? Yeah, certainly a big moment. There's fine margins in uh, in sport, so sometimes, you know, you, you save the try and you get yourself back in it, or if, if you concede it at that point, it's a long way home. So there's good desperation to get there and do enough to, to save the try, and from that point, you know, I think we, we capitalised on it, and I think the you know, the ruck was adjudicated on um, differently at various patches of the game. Um, but, you know, I thought, I thought in the end we did enough to win. What do you say about Ash Hanley? You've been asked about him after every game, I think, so far this, this season. And another two tries, he was involved in that defensive effort as well. Yeah, uh, to be fair, I think he caught the ball and put it down. Um, I think Mommers was very generous to him on, on that one. Um, Try scoring wise, he put himself in the right spot, obviously, but um, others clearly did the work on, the, on those tries. Uh, his carrying out of yardage was exceptional. Um, again, for a, he's not a big man, but he's, he plays way above his weight and he rolls his sleeves up and he, he works hard. And he, I love his temperament. Um, nothing seems to phase him. He plays the same all the time, no matter what the score is or what the week is or what the surface is or whatever else is going on. He, he plays the same way, so um, it's another strong performance for Ash. Good contribution from Brody when he uh, when you got on top in the second half. He played a big part in that. Yeah, I thought Acker's play selection was good. Poked his nose through a few times, went through clean. Um, Miller carried the ball hard and was hand, hard to handle. Brody came up with a few big plays. Uh, Frawley played uh, really composed footy, good play selection and. Great, you know, that, that try really made a, a massive impact on the game as well. So I think a collective, um, you yeah, know, we'll work on him passing the ball to each other even more as we go. But, yeah, I thought individually for the team, they all played the right way in that second half. Obviously, you don't want to go 16 nil, nil down every game, but the qualities you've shown to, to fight back from that are are um, obviously an important part of the team, aren't they? They're, they're something that you can, you can build on going forward. Well, you've got, to, you've got to be able to win different ways and you, you've got to be able to play from behind and you, you've got to be able to play from in front and you've got to be able to play when the scores are even. Like it's, It really doesn't matter what the score is until the end. Um, we're, we're playing to win and we're, we're playing to uh, do well on more plays than the other team. And if you do that, then usually at the end of the game you'll, you'll get the result that you're chasing. But... Yeah, I think we all talk about the scoreboard too much um, rather than what's happen actually happening in the game. And I thought Lee, as I said, attacked some really good plays, uh, well executed. But aside from those you know, moments, we, we weren't that bad in the first half. We're at 16-0, we weren't that bad. Um, and I liked the, the composure and the, the calmness at half time. It wasn't, no one was flustered. It was very relaxed, it was, it was quiet, but they were all, eyes were all up and everyone was just taking their breaths, ready to go back and fight. And just last thing from me, Andy Ackers looked like he, he limped off and um, did James McDonnell, was he injured as well? Yeah, I think, I think Mac, is, Mac is fine now. Um, it was more sort of illness related. Uh, 
Akers, yeah, he had a bad uh, contusion, which uh, for you and me, Pete, that's a bruise. Um, <coughs> like a, a good one, a good one, um, quite, quite an egg on his, sort of on his shin. So uh, hopefully that, that's all it is, uh, but we'll, we'll get that checked over the weekend and, and uh, get him ready for next week. You mentioned half-time there. What, what was said at half-time? Uh, uh, I, I said I thought we needed to have a bit more intent own our own patch a little bit with our, our tackle and our market play. Um, I didn't think we were at the standard that we need in the first half. Um, and then that put pressure on us on our edge defence because they they're having it their own way. And, you know, as I said, Lee, Lee played really well and they, they challenged us in the second half as well. But I thought we rectified the physical battle a, a bit better um, enough to, to get ourselves on the front foot in attack. Do you think the sim bin helped you, obviously, because you really took advantage of it towards the end of it as well? Do you think that really helped you when you come back? Well, you'd have, if you had the option of playing against 12 or 13, you'd choose 12. Um, but, you know, they were repeat offences. You know, the, the, that's another week. I think we've had a few of them where teams are intentionally slowing us down, repeat tackle, holding down. You know, the referee has no choice. I just think the referees drift in and out of applying the, the new ruck interpretations. Um, you know, but the, the sin bin that we, we suffered at the back end there, like that made the back end of the game an even bigger struggle against a quality attacking team. You know, and that, that's just bordering on, I'm not sure what you're allowed to say, but look, that's big, fast footwork front rower taking the ball into the line and he doesn't get hit, he gets contacted when he's bringing in the line. Like you, if you're a ball player, any size, if you take the ball deep into the line, you should assume you are gonna get tackled. Like that is not a late hit. And he, you know, the game could have shifted from there. And it's just, everyone's just screaming for, you know, everyone around me, every single incident is screaming for a yellow card. That's what we've created for ourselves. Like if we want the game to be 12 aside, just change the rules at the start of the year and play 12 aside. We'll have two front rowers, we'll lose the loose forward, keep all the other positions the same and, you know, let's play 12 aside. But uh, everyone's just yelling for it. All we're talking about is sin bins, yellow cards, high tackles, it's just, it's a good game of footy, that. Two good teams, and it nearly got spoiled. Do you feel that we're speaking more about those decisions after a game rather than, you know, the actual key moments in the game after we're talking about, like, referee decisions? We are. We are. Like, poor Tarek Sims, you know, last week gets sin-binned for trying to save a try. And he, you know, I didn't disagree with the eight-point try sort of decision. He did make contact with the head in the act of scoring, which is a, you know, opportunity to be an eight point try, but a sin bin, what, what's that for? Like, I'm, you know, I'm just confused and you, you go and as a coach, you're going into the game, hoping that's all we're doing. We're hoping that we don't, we're hoping. Is the reality almost like different than what the referees who went to training pre-season almost like explain? The referees went to training pre-season and explained it'd be like this, this and this. Now you're actually in the competitive game. It's turned out to be something different, maybe. Well, when we're talking about the ruck, um, there's a clear difference from referee to referee, how the ruck is adjudicated on. Um, so it's almost, you have to you know, prepare for the opposition and also um, game plan the, how the game might be refereed. Um, and that's cool, as long as you know that that's gonna be consistent um, the, the high tackle stuff, they were clear. They were clear that um, high tackles were going to get sin binned. No one tries to do high tackles. Ask one player out there whether he's trying to high tackle anyone. No one's intentionally doing it. Behaviour has changed over the course of time and there's fewer high tackles than ever before. But the punishment, the penalty is a punishment. That is a big punishment. Now, then we go sin bin. Then we go suspension and fine, it's too, it's too much. Do you feel as though the, the focus being on refereeing decisions almost like puts 
undue pressure on the officials themselves, maybe. Like well, how, how many times did we go to the video ref tonight? And, and most of the time it turned out just to be a penalty. But the game stops, slows down, the crowd are agitated and sh shouting for a yellow card. Then they don't get it, so now they're agitated. So the referee's actually under more pressure now by the crowd because he stopped the game to let the video ref check, take the attrition out of the game. There's no flow. Like, and that's taken away from what is a good game tonight, in my opinion. You know, Lee attacked really well. They were desperate. We played pretty good for big chunks of the game. But there's still, like, we're having a stoppage for what? You know, Brodie Croft contests on a kick, clearly and correctly gets penalised. But what, why are we having a 40-second stoppage? Lee should be kicking the ball into touch and we should be on the back foot. We stop the game, tell Brody, oh, you don't do that anymore. Well, of course he knows, he just gave away a penalty. Like, what are we stopping the game for? Here he's getting a lot of game time for you. Yes. Yeah. He's, he's loving it to bits, have a chat with him before the game. Oh, he's a terrific young man. And um, yeah, he had some, some mixed times here playing for Lee, but obviously this is his home hometown and home club and um, it was a big step for him to come to Leeds last year. He did a really commendable job at times last year. Um, this pre-season he's trained as a centre. Um, you know, we lost Fusatua and Offutz at the same time um, due, to, due to injury so you know, we gave him a shot there and he's, he's adjusted and the boys love playing with him. He's a terrific young man and he's doing a good job and he, he's growing. Um, he's still learning his trade. Uh, but he's, yeah, he's, he's been impressive. He's a good young lad and I'm really happy for him today. And only 21. Yeah, he's, he's a kid. You know, he's finding his way. He's, at a, um, he's bounced around a bit on his way to, to Leeds, but he's, he's done a really good job.